this point, we do have three or four or five points. Uh, Service? In every community lives the restless American. He travels in his car, in his boat. He is also, in many instances, the careless American. Records of the Coast Guard search and rescue system confirm this. The primary mission of search and rescue is to render aid to distressed persons, vessels, and aircraft. Coast Guard air stations operate around the clock, ready for any emergency, using helicopters, planes that can land and take off on either sea or shore, or the big long-distance seaplanes. With over 30 million persons interested in boating, new types of aircraft provide even more safety for the public. Lifeboat stations have a long and honorable history in the annals of the sea. Coast Guard's fast search and rescue boats are always alert to any demands made upon them. Its small cutters patrol areas where pleasure craft may require their services to ensure safety of life and property at sea. Another part of the search and rescue system is the network of Coast Guard radio stations. Radio men on watch are always ready to transmit and receive messages. Coast Guard installations ashore maintain message centers. Provide coordination with other armed forces and local law enforcement authorities. These circuits are invaluable during emergency action. Here in the Coast Guard Rescue Coordination Center, action to protect the safety of lives and property is initiated. A storm or a disaster at sea will alert the SAR facilities of the Coast Guard to immediate action. The careless boatman is, of course, always someone else. Search and rescue incidents occur, but never involve you. Take this young married couple, for instance. They are getting an early morning start for a day's fishing. They'll get their catch and be back in good time. Her mother expects them back by 4 p.m. A little knock in the engine, but it started. He's a good mechanic and knows boats. The Coast Guard will be alert to answer any emergency call he may have to make. Just relax and catch fish. But today the fish are not cooperating, or perhaps they have moved to better feeding areas. So the thing to do is go after them. Late afternoon at home, the girl's mother is worrying a little. The couple ought to be back from their fishing trip by now. She starts wondering. Many things could have happened to delay them, normal things. But if ashore, they would have telephoned. In many city phone books, the Coast Guard's number is prominently listed in the fore part of the book for just such emergencies. Worried mothers are not new to the Coast Guard. The RCC controller answers. He asks the number and description of the boat, persons aboard, destination, time of return. The mother furnishes the information. No overdue boat is considered a routine matter. An overdue marker is placed at the last known location of the boat. Search operations commence. This is where the couple planned to fish. They could have moved elsewhere or could have had trouble. They should have radioed the Coast Guard. The couple may have returned late and still be within the harbor area, visiting. Assuming trouble at sea, the controller uses the closest method of search at hand. A helicopter, which is returning from an inland search for a missing small plane. 
he diverts the helicopter toward the beach with instructions to search the area on his way to the air station. During daylight, helicopter searches can cover a large area of shoreline or sea in a short time. The controller also alerts a Coast Guard Harbor Patrol craft. The patrol craft on routine duty along the waterfront gets the word to conduct an immediate search of the harbor. The number and description of the pleasure craft are received aboard the 40-footer. With dusk approaching, the patrol craft loses no time getting underway to search the extensive waterfront. A message is drafted alerting all vessels in the general area for the missing boat. The alert goes to the message center for transmission. It is transmitted by a teletype circuit to the Coast Guard Air Station and lifeboat stations and by radio to floating units. The operations duty officer at the Coast Guard Air Station receives the alert message. A Coast Guard cutter on routine patrol in the general area of the last known location of the missing boat receives the alert. A routine lookout watch is being kept aboard ship. The cutter changes course to commence a search. As evening nears, time for visual search will be limited. A small motorboat at sea is seldom easily found on a search. And this one may have moved in any direction from its last known location. Simultaneously with the air station and the cutter at sea, the lifeboat stations have received the alert. In this case, by teletype circuit. A lookout makes an immediate search of the beach and nearby ocean areas with negative results. Within a few minutes, another Coast Guard 40-footer is departing the lifeboat station en route to conduct a search of coastal areas before darkness arrives. Not much search time remains before twilight. In addition to the 40-footer, a 36-foot lifeboat is dispatched on search along the coastline. Somewhere on the ocean surface, the missing boat drifts helplessly. His troubles are compounding. Engine trouble leaves the boat helpless. A radio call to the Coast Guard would bring aid, but with a low battery and no engine to replenish it, he can receive but cannot transmit. It looks like a long night ahead. At sea, without power and communication, a dangerous situation exists. Perhaps a night alone at sea will be a good lesson for them. It isn't going to be that simple, however. A weather report shows that far to the southwest, a bad storm is headed in their direction. Another Coast Guard cutter beats her way through the storm, trying to outrun it as it moves northeastward toward the mainland. With possible bad weather in the search area, the controller notifies the 95-footer to continue the radar search throughout the night and warns him of the storm to the south. The area covered by the search is growing.
The weather report concerning the storm is transmitted by the Coast Guard radio station to the SAR network and to all ships at sea. Radio contact with installations ashore and ships at sea is constantly maintained. The combined federal state fund should be sufficient to plan our highway system beyond the present. The Coast Guard is still pressing its search for the missing pleasure craft reported earlier on this program. The young married couple are the only persons known to be aboard the missing boat. Weather for this area, no immediate rain in sight tonight. The storm, centered southwest of the coast, is moving northeast rapidly. That couple in the lost boat may be directly in the storm's path. The mother is seeking reassurance that all possible efforts are being made to find the missing boat. Relatives and friends of missing persons usually keep the phone hot. All available information is given callers. The weather factor in this case may require further assurance of plans for an all-night search. The controller originates a message advising the 95-footer that if necessary, the search will be augmented by aircraft at first light. In areas of heavy air and boat traffic, the rescue coordination center is normally busy with a number of cases simultaneously sinkings, groundings, medical evacuations, and aircraft incidents. The teletype machines are seldom quiet, and once more a report on the weather to the south comes in. The storm has increased in violence, heavy seas beating against all ships caught in the area. This weather report, as with previous ones, will be transmitted to all concerned in the SAR network. Just prior to retiring, the commanding officer at the Coast Guard Air Station is notified by the Air Station Operations Duty Officer that RCC has directed an air search at first light in the morning. The ocean area in which the lost craft may be found is to be searched by plane and helicopter. The very human desire for a little more news, reassurance, brings another call from the worried mother. Unless the night search locates the lost craft, dawn will find the air facilities racing the approaching storm. Now a respite for coffee as things quiet down. But not for long. A plane is missing to the north. Its last known location is indicated on the big chart. Using radar during the night hours, the cutter still has not located the missing craft. Her search pattern, an expanding square, permits complete coverage of the area. The controller notifies the cutter that the storm is moving steadily toward the area and that the air station will conduct a first light aerial search for the missing boat. front is now affecting local weather reports. Storm warning signals are raised, signifying approaching adverse weather conditions. Fishing and pleasure boats will hesitate to venture far from shore. The commanding officer of the cutter receives information regarding the aircraft that will commence the first light search from the air station. The aircraft will keep him informed of the progress of their search. The air station operations duty officer also gets a last minute weather report prior to starting the aerial search. The aerial operations starts racing against storm and time.
Guard UF amphibian plane, able to take off from land or sea, prepares to join the search with its far greater range and speed than the helicopter. A second helicopter follows. Now that the aircraft are on search, the RCC evaluates the situation. This is the area that the lifeboat station boats covered prior to darkness last evening. One helicopter is searching north and one south, covering far more area. The UF plane conducts a modified expanding square search pattern, maintaining radio communication with RCC and other search units. The UF moves seaward from the shore area. It will increase the area search with each additional leg of the pattern. The cutter is kept informed of the plane search movements and of the coastal search by the two helicopters. One of the helicopters returns to the Coast Guard Air Station for refueling. Once refueled, it will expand its search area. The storm has worsened and is now battering its way northward toward the area of sea where the missing boat may be located. Weather symbols are moved on the chart to keep a record of the storm. While good weather still exists in the search area, time is most important. The refueled helicopter's previous search is now extended farther toward the south along the beach. boat without power or radio still drifts helplessly at sea. The area being searched by the plane is steadily increasing. The young couple aboard the boat are certain now that a plane is in the vicinity. They break out distress smoke flares. The 95-footer is notified by the plane that the boat has been found. The cutter gets underway toward the area where the missing boat has been located. The helicopter alters course to take the boat in tow at sea. The controller calls the mother to notify her that the boat has been located and the, he tells her that the boat will soon be on its way in and gives her the location to which it will be brought and approximate time of arrival. Helicopter tows of small craft are a new rescue development, saving a great deal of time.
line is made ready aboard the helicopter. The tow line is dropped to the waiting operator of the boat. Secured in place, the line is reeled in and the helicopter takes a strain on it. The boat will be towed only far enough to rendezvous with a 95-foot cutter now en route to meet them. Tugbird operation ends as the cutter reaches their vicinity. Such helicopter tows save time in cases of danger to boats or personnel. Since the boat's occupants are not injured, no boarding is necessary at this time. The cutter takes the boat in tow for the remainder of the way in. The cutter will proceed to the harbor at safe maximum speed considering the sea and the size of the tow. Open sea operations require good judgment by all hands for towing can be hazardous. Safely inside the harbor now, the cutter maneuvers the boat into position to come alongside the dock. Happy Mother is on hand for the boat's arrival. The tow line is released to permit the boat to drift into the dock. And the family is reunited, wiser than they were yesterday. The boat is boarded by the Coast Guard to determine the cause of the SAR incident. This is usually done by the Coast Guard unit affecting the rescue. With the thousands of pleasure craft that ply the coastal waters, the search and rescue operations are vitally important. Plans for any intended voyage, the persons on board, and a description of the craft should be known by someone ashore so that they may be furnished to the Coast Guard if the boat becomes overdue. Certain safety precautions should be observed by boat owners. Engine area is important. Engine failure causes many SAR incidents. Failure of transmitting and receiving equipment may cause an extended surge. Signaling equipment, both day and night, should be aboard and in good condition with knowledge by all hands of its proper use. Because one boatman neglected to take proper precautions, three small search boats, a 95-foot cutter, two helicopters, one search plane, an airfield, two lifeboat stations, a radio network, and the RCC have all been involved in searching a 4,000 square mile area. Coast Guard is as close as your phone book, where you will find it listed under emergency numbers for quick reference. Search planes are ready at all times for any alert. Helicopters using new towing methods may return boats to safety in far less time. Cutters are always available for searches, but prevention by the boat operator is better than necessity for a search and rescue. And there can be no assurance that the rescue craft of the Coast Guard may not be occupied in a search and rescue incident elsewhere when you find yourself in difficulties. The careless boat operator contributes to the almost 30,000 rescue cases affected by the Coast Guard each year. This chief has a new one right now. A report has been received that an outboard motorboat has broken down and requires a tow to the safety of the harbor. Of course, this happens to seven million other boat owners, never to you.
learn what is required of you and do it. The United States Coast Guard operates a search and rescue network designed to provide maximum safety for life and property at sea. Know how to reach it and how to cooperate with it. Search and rescue one day may have to rescue you.